G'day guys, Dom here. So today we're gonna to do a bit of an assembly video on one of these friction folders. Now the reason being is I've made quite a few of these now and there's plenty of these now in the world. So I figured I might as well do a video on centering one of these things, taking it apart, maintenance, all that sort of stuff, because uh, these are particularly difficult to center if you're not doing them right. So yeah, if that's not, if you don't own one of these things or you don't have any interest in friction folders, this isn't for you. But for the people that do, uh, just watch the video and hopefully it'll help you out. So first things first, I'm just taking this apart. Now these pivots are all free floating, so you may need two of these. Just be real careful first up. I find these uh, shock glasses work great for keeping track of all these tiny little screws. And there we go, the last fully disassembled. Now the top might be difficult to take off. Like this one is just kind of stuck on there, that's just because the tolerances are fairly tight. And the easiest way to get that off is either just slowly rock it off like this. And if you get really desperate, you can get yourself like a little, um, little bit of metal or a stick or something and wrap tape around that and kind of stick it between there and leverage it out. I avoid doing that if I can, because that's a great way of scratching the shit out of your knife if you're not careful. Come on, come on. And this one's really on there for some reason. There we go. All right, so that one's out. Now this is the time where you can take the time to clean it. So if you gotta clean your knife, this is the time to do it. And this one's really in there. All right, so yeah, now the knife is fully disassembled. And yeah, so yeah, now the knife is fully disassembled and this is the perfect time to give a bit of a wipe down, maybe oil the blade a bit, make sure everything uh, will maintain and last. So, if you own a folding knife, these things are the shit. Because they're just great for getting in all these little nooks and crannies and cleaning out all this crap. Which can actually slow down your action, it can also uh, lead to premature wear. Now this one's actually not too dirty, but if you've been carrying one of these in your pockets for a few months, you'll find all sorts of shit in there, which you really don't want. So just go over the whole thing real quick and then I like to just quickly wipe down the internals of it and the externals. Just get rid of all that crap. And then the blade too. With washers, if you mix them up and you put one side on backwards, what you can do is you can expose a fresh surface that hasn't been worn or hasn't, you know, broken in yet to the blade and that can kind of increase your break-in time. So if it's, a, if it's an older knife, it might help a little bit if you just make sure you don't mix them up. This one here, I've made three days ago, so uh, I'm not hugely concerned about mixing up the, about the break-in because it hasn't even had a chance to break in yet, if that makes sense. And while this is disassembled, I'm just going to go over it real quick with a bit of this stuff. Uh, it's called Renaissance Wax. It's very expensive, but it's supposed to last a really long time. And uh, it's supposed to stop corrosion. To be perfectly honest, I can't really tell. But for stainless steels and stuff, it works well enough and everyone seems to swear by it. So it's the stuff I use. 
It's just a bit, quite a bit of a, a light coating of this stuff. This is a stainless steel, and I don't think it'll be an issue if I didn't coat this, but you know, better safe than sorry. All right, and the washers too, just give them a bit of a, bit of a wipe down real quick. Now with these you gotta be kind of careful because I'm using Teflon washers here and Teflon washers can kind of bend and do sort of not so great stuff if, you, if you're not too careful with them. Alright, so now I've got the knife fully disassembled and we're ready to put it back together. Uh, but before we do that, we're actually going to put a bit of Loctite on this and we're going to go through Loctiting. So, let's just take this apart fully. Thank you, neighbor, for driving by. So when you're Loctiting a knife, you want some very weak Loctite. Uh, typically it's blue. You don't want the red stuff, because the red stuff's permanent. There we go. Yeah, so again, you want blue Loctite, not the red stuff. Uh, just because blue Loctite is non-permanent, and red Loctite sure as hell is. So, you barely need any of this stuff. So what I like to do is I like to get a scribe, or basically anything that's metal and pointy. I can take a tiny little bit of this, tiny, tiny little bit, and apply it to the screw. Because you barely need anything on there, and the more Loctite you have on there, the bigger the chances that that screw is not going to come out too easy. So you really just want enough to keep the screw in there and stop it from rotating. And I've taken way too much Loctite for this, so if you there's no way the camera's gonna focus on that, but it's got a tiny little dollop of, of Loctite on that screw. And it's also a good idea to get some high quality drivers. These definitely aren't, so I am fighting with them a little bit. But I know Weha, they make good stuff. Uh, Swiss Tool, they actually make some okay um, Torx bits. This is a Swiss tool and I love this one. Okay. Just those assembled. So I almost always assemble from the left side. I don't know, I, it's just what I do. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. But that's just what I do. Almost forgot about my pivot. Bit of that again, tiny little dollop of Loctite. Get that shit on there. than that. So now we're fully assembled. On this side, take my backspacer, make sure there's no crap in the backspacer. So no dust or anything, because that's going to affect your, your centering. Slot that in. I'll take one of my, my washers and a bit of oil. So this is nano oil. Don't ask me what weight, I can't remember. Uh, it's thicker stuff. Um, yeah, nano oil is a pretty good, pretty good oil for this sort of stuff. It's worth the investment, and you barely need any of it, so it lasts forever. 
I technically don't have to do this side, but I figured it doesn't hurt. As long as you don't go overboard with oil. So you really just want a tiny little, tiny little bit of oil. That's probably too much right there. But not too bad. What you want to avoid is just globbing this oil on like crazy and having, you know, tons of runoff because that can actually lead to, uh, that can lead to the, uh, the oil attracting dust and all that sort of stuff into your mechanism, which you, you really don't want. And now at this point, you just wanna get these things to all fit together. Nice and neatly. All right, so at this point, basically have an assembled knife minus the screws. So this is where people tend to fuck up. I, with these friction folders, you absolutely have to start with the, the pivot. You can't start with these. With these friction folders, you absolutely have to start with this pivot right here. You can't tighten in this one. You can't tighten in this one first. You can't tighten in this one first. This one has to go first. And the reason being is you can use this to adjust your centering and get that dialed in before you put in the rest of the screws. And that kind of just reduces the chances of things going to crap. Now it still can because these are friction folders and they do weird shit. But you can see here, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up. We've already got this thing centered. Now the tension isn't quite where I'd like it. So we'll tighten that up a little bit. But yeah, we've got it nicely centered right now. And from here, now I can adjust the rest of it. If you were to do, say, this screw first, what's gonna happen is you're gonna sort of tilt these handles from being parallel to kind of like that, and that means your centering is gonna go haywire. So, now that I've done this screw, I can do these two back here. And again, tiny little dollop of the stuff. Slap it on there. So these back screws I cranked down almost all the way. You don't have to go crazy with, you know, put massive amount of torque in there, but enough torque that they stay in is, is really what you want. Because you do want to be able to disassemble this down the road if, uh, if you need to. And then finally I put in this screw here last. The reason being is this screw can kind of, it can do weird things. Exhibit A. There we go. So I'd say we're nicely centered. I'm happy with that. And the way I test if the tension's good enough, I don't want it being too loose. I want it to have a certain amount of tension there. And if I flick it like this, I don't want that blade coming around and cutting in the fingers. I typically send these out a little tighter than I'd normally like. Uh, two reasons, it's safe that way. It, kind of limits liability issues and it reduces the issues of somebody um, messing with these in the post. If you want to adjust these and make them looser or tighter, that's up to you. Uh, if you do that, make sure you stick with these two. These two screws here are like the command center for a knife. That's how you adjust your centering. So by playing with the tension between these two screws, you can get this tip going back and forth. You can adjust the tension of how much it, uh, it uh, it grabs on the knife. For instance, this screw back here is super tight. Let's just do that real quick. You'll find that it suddenly gets really tight when you come back here. Now, it's not ideal, it works. Uh, it's just kind of a, you know, a personal feel thing, how you want to adjust it. But yeah, basically, these two screws are the command center for a knife, and if you're ever doing any adjustment or you have having issues centering up a knife, it's these two screws you've got to mess with. In some cases, very rarely, one of these two might need to be loosened up a hair, but that's that's not normal. Usually you can get all your adjustment done with these two. And mainly with this main screw, this one here is sort of like a little backup thing. You don't want this one here too tight. This is where you get most of your adjustment from in the, the pivot. But anyway, yeah, that's it. 
Uh, after you put Loctite on there, I suggest you kind of leave it for a bit. The Loctite, depending on what you get, can take a couple hours to a couple of days to fully cure and harden. So I don't recommend fucking with it too much because you can kind of loosen it up and then you right back to where you started. So give the Loctite a chance to dry. And uh, yeah, that's basically it guys. So if you got one of these and you have any other questions, email me. Uh, I send my card out with all of these things with my, my website. And from there you can get my email and I'll, I'll help you out. So anyway, that's the friction folders. That's how you kind of get them to behave and do what they're supposed to. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.